So in the last seven and a half, eight years, I worked at nine companies, technically 11, but I did a lot of freelancing in Canada and I was working in sales and I was working in marketing. I did a lot of marketing stuff, marketing operations, demand generation, marketing content, marketing, podcasting and video production and marketing strategy and brand. So full spectrum of all of these jobs. And in this video, I will tell you what were the lessons? What have I learned by working at these Canadian companies as an immigrant, as a Ukrainian who never really lived before much outside of Ukraine? And this whole English speaking culture, North American culture, Canadian culture was very, very new to me. And the first thing I have seen and I have learned is the culture in all these companies. And an important note, I worked at companies that were 500 people, 600 people, all the way to 10, 15 and 20, 30. And some of them were like 100 people. So it was a range of large enterprise, not like super large, but large and really tiny, small. And the lowest one, the smallest one was like five people. It was a yoga studio. That was just my very first foray into professional world of Canadian employment. Now, the very first thing that I have noticed is hyper conservative culture in all of these companies in general, because most of them are Canadian and Canadians are very conservative. So that means they are very afraid to try something new. They don't like to spend money and they don't really like to take risks. And the biggest thing was for me getting a job was super hard because I don't really have my experience like written with big letters on the resume. Like I know how to do marketing and I know how to do sales, but I don't really have a big track record and I don't have big logos that you could lure other recruiters with. So that didn't help. Not everything is going to be encouraged to do. And they're probably going to say, no, let's just not do that because let's not spend the money because this is not the right thing, etc. And this is just what I noticed across the board, across all these companies. Sometimes you come up with an initiative and you think it's really cool, but you need some budget for it, for marketing, or you would like to test a campaign and they will say, no, we're not going to do this. And this is just one of those things that is across the board in companies that I have been to. Now, some of them are a little bit more, some of them are a little bit less conservative, but in general, they don't like to do things outside of their true and tested lane. The other thing is salaries. Salaries in general are low. They're really low and you have to be like a vice president or basically co-founder to be having any decent salary. Like I'll give you an example. The best or one of the highest salaries I have had was $90,000 Canadian. 90,000, it seems good on paper, right? But then what you end up getting after tax is like $4,800 or $5,000 and that's Canadian. And that was like a few years ago. So you put all the expenses and crazy rent and you don't really get that much. For example, if you were to make like a, over $100,000, like 100. 20k 130k you're going to be put in a higher tax bracket and tax is going to basically eat up all the advantages and you will be basically sleeping on that job because of the vp and the amount of responsibilities that you'll have so with ninety thousand dollars you're really making more like 60 and when i was making 60 well that was like two thousand four hundred dollars or something like that twenty three hundred dollars per month and um, that wasn't a lot at all than you would have in the united states so salaries would be absolutely a lot lower than what you can get in the united states europe i'm not sure but United States, absolutely. Now, this is something I've been really surprised by. And I don't know why, but Canadians, they are surprisingly are ready to put up with a lot of crap at the job and really shitty employers. Like they're very loyal. Canadians are generally super loyal people. Now I have seen time and time again when they had like the boss that was just way out of line and he was just doing some crazy shit and Canadians would work with this guy and like try to make it work and put things together. I didn't expect that because for example, it happens once your employer apologizes, but if it happens repeatedly time and time and time again, Canadians or a few people that I have met, they would be working with him. They would be trying to patch things up. And that was just so surprising. So they're very, very loyal as employees. This is something I've seen across the board, across all the companies. And sometimes you have a boss who is frankly not that great. And a lot of employees would be following him. And that is very, very unusual in like different culture, like in Ukrainian culture, that wouldn't be the case at all. The employees would just quit and find a better job. This one is a typical Canadian thing, small talk. I hate small talk. It's basically talking about nonsense. This is not only obviously related to jobs, it's related to the Canadian culture, but like, what the hell? <laughs> Let's just get to the freaking point. Now, I mean, I'm very good now at small talk. I can talk about anything, dogs, weather, elevators, 
snow, rain, sunshine, cloud weather, whatever, all shapes and flavors of weather. I'm good with that. But what's the point? I love being straight to the point. I'm Eastern European. Let's get it done. And to me, it's a cultural thing, but I don't really like it. Now, this point doesn't relate to just Canadian companies. It's also relevant to a lot of other companies and other cultures. It's this concept of optics. It's this thing that you are supposed to project an ultimate level of performance and ideal employee to others while doing absolutely nothing. It's like they pay you to sit there from nine until five, right? In those hours, most of the time, you're supposed to be making it look like you're working and nobody really cares if you're working, but they want you to sit at the table and show that you're doing all the things you're supposed to do from that letter of responsibilities. I think it's quite dumb because, well, let's just judge people by their results and not by number of hours people sit. That just doesn't make any sense. And this was a big thing. Like, seriously, I've been taught and told and drilled like, no, we got to be like this optics is super, super key. So let's just make sure that you're on brand and at the desk. I'm like, well, can we just focus on results? Because there's like half of the guys are just coasting, not doing anything, but they have beautiful optics. It's a classic concept at the office. If you're just being busy and working, like running around from one meeting room to another with a laptop, you pretty projecting the ultimate employee. To me, it's just complete nonsense. And this really leads me to the next point of politics. Larger companies have way more politics. And I didn't even understand what the hell this is because first I didn't really work in large companies and I didn't know what it is, but it's basically this thing where you speak to people and you pull the right people in the right rooms, tell them the right things and make sure that they give a good word to whoever they're speaking with about you and do you favors and you do them favors. And a lot of it is not related to the job at all. It's just purely just playing on feelings and aspirations and careers and titles of other people. And I mean, it's pretty much bullshit, but it's super key to a large company and the way that it works. And I was amazed because I've seen people who are doing okay job. They're like average employees, but they get like amazing praise. And I'm like, why are they doing it? And then I understood it's because, you know, when you send the right email at the right time to the right person and say something that they will enjoy and they will be like, what a great employee that is. There would just be tearful and teary eyed. And look, you know, if you know how to work the system, it's a probably good experience. But I personally was much more interested in doing great work and looking at the performance and the amount of stuff done and the output instead of trying to play games. And I mean, corporate was never, never something I was attracted to. In fact, I hated it. Now, I also noticed that there's a limited training and coaching in general. I had a very good sales training. Like at first, it was really, really good, comprehensive and everything. But because sales is very structured, marketing is generally unstructured jobs. Training Training and coaching, I mean, it wasn't really great. Now, I know, and some of you will tell me that, hey, it's my job to ask an employer and tell them, listen, I need to know this. How do I do this? And of course I did that. But in general, I'm talking about the company training and company programs to improve your skills and everything and show you how things are done. I would say it is quite limited across the board from what I've seen. Now, managers or bosses in general are terrible. In my experience from the companies that I worked with, we're really below average. And that doesn't really help because you don't get a lot of feedback experience. They don't really tell you how things are going. And, and a lot of them are just not very competent themselves. I've only had one or two. One of them was absolutely incredible. He was born in Canada, but not Canadian. And he was absolutely incredible, which I cannot say for a lot of others. Now, a lot of it is luck, but I would say there's a clear pattern where there are people who are okay, but if you are looking to significantly progress in your career, they won't be much of a help. And where does it show? Well, they don't really care about you. They don't really care about where you go in your career. And they don't really show you things. They don't really keep you in the loop on the bigger company issues and what they're doing. There's a barrier between you and them. Plus, they are not very good at their job. And in larger companies, let's say over 200 people, politics is insane. Everything is about politics. It's not what you do. It's what you said, he said, she said, and it's all about pulling strings, sending emails, doing everybody favors. It's a total different game. It's not like you're being like a politician. You're playing like Joe Biden and Trump. It has nothing to do with work. And I didn't understand that at all at first. Like how are some employees getting praise or email where their boss is CC'd and there's like 30 other people in the email chain. Like I know them, they're all right. They're not great. And the work they did is not that great. It's because they send an email to the right person saying the right words. And that person really liked those words and they're connected to the boss and they connect
connected to the boss's boss and then they put things together and then send that email and they got a little bit of promotion. Now they're not just a campaign manager, they're a senior campaign manager. So no, I'm not into politics. I love startups and I love execution. I love doing great work with people who just do work and focus on that instead of trying to do other stuff. Okay, this one is interesting because a lot of Canadians, I have noticed a lot of employees and will be able to tell that about other companies, non-Canadian. Canadians are not doing a lot of work. They're just coasting. They're like not working at all. And you could tell the company is good or they are at the scale because there's like a very small number of employees who are doing all the work. And all others are just doing a little bit, maybe like an hour, two hours a day. And they're barely trying barely trying and you could tell so that is a very very unusual thing i guess but again this is me coming from a different culture across half of the world and in addition to that a lot of canadians are working like super hard way way too hard like they're sitting there past 6 p.m they're leaving at like 6 30 and for what like it's just a normal job and it was a pretty sad thing i don't know why they would do it a lot of them were not in management positions or anything like that but a few that i've seen did some immense immense amount of work and more like mundane type of not like a hustle but just turning through daily routine and customer success where you just talk to clients and yeah. One more, you can make friends with international employees quite easily. With Canadians, no such thing, nope. You're not gonna be friends with Canadian employees regardless of how much time you hang out in the office. Now, you may, if you go for 10 years and you like at the bar and you do the beer thing all the time, maybe, maybe. And you watch hockey, you like, you're in the jersey, like you're religious about it. <laughs> maybe that works. But in a realistic scenario, it's not gonna happen. Canadians are very set with their friend groups. So international employees, different thing, different matter completely. So in the end, I am a startup guy. I love startups. I love hustle. I love the actual work. And I love working with great people who are competent, who are pushing themselves way beyond what they can do at the moment. That's for me is the coolest thing. I don't like the small talk. Let's do the cool work. We're going to talk later. You're going to have fun after work. I don't like to be managed. I don't like when somebody is looking at my hours. That's probably one of the reasons I don't like working for other people. But I hate when somebody's trying to watch me because I will move. I will go through the walls in two, three hours being absolutely focused. But again, everybody's different. Everyone's lifestyle is different. Now, here's my advice. If you're looking for a company in Canada, as an example, and you'd like to learn as much as possible, what will be something to look for? I would recommend to look for a non-Canadian boss because the company is only as good as their founder and um, all the culture all the rules all the procedures are set by founders and i would recommend a non-canadian founder because i think there's a more opportunity there are more risks there are more personal growth that you could potentially have the other thing is smaller is better generally not too small because they're not going to have any structure and you're going to be running around not knowing what to do but anything 20 30 50 like up to 100 people is good. And what you want to do is look at who's in the news, look at startup blogs, and then look at LinkedIn, filter out by employees. And then you go find their office, go to actually to their office, take their lowest paid employee for coffee or dinner or lunch. Let's say employees are walking out of the office, catch one of them and say, hey, I absolutely love what you do. Would love to know more. Can I buy you dinner? Because that low level employee will tell you everything about the company. You will never know what the culture's like, what the work's like, and how is it like to work with their founders. Most of the stuff that you will see online on YouTube, in those startup blogs, TechCrunch, etc., is going to be very PR, not true, right? So you want to really hear it from people who work at the company, because a lot of times what happens, and it happened to me for sure, you go to an interview, you get the job, you get into the company, and you're like, oh god. It's a classic Peter Thiel saying, on the outside, everybody wants to get in, on the inside, everybody wants to get out. That's just what it is, literally. And so to avoid that, this is, will be my recommendation. I wish I had done it. It would have made things a lot simpler, but hey, I didn't. Maybe you can. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little video about my lessons of working at nine Canadian companies. Consider adding this up to the channel. I'll be sharing more personal stories in Canada. Then I'll be talking about how I work remotely in Portugal, building a business in video marketing. And I shall see you in the next one.